I do think that food is a transfer of energy, like physically, how much energy you put into the food that you're making. But then now that you said that what he was thinking, what he was saying, I'm thinking social media, I'm thinking like the news, I'm thinking like the books you're reading, you have the choice in like your fingertips of what you're taking in. And it's like, do I want to sit after I come home from work and scroll through Instagram or TikTok for like the silliest things? Or do I want to like sit and <laughs> zoom scroll and like hear about coronavirus and and the war like for five hours? You know, exactly. At some point, um, at some point, you're like, it's all the same content, you know? You're just hearing it differently. You gotta come with the animals when you hit that second one. Hey, 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 listen. Hey, hey. If if I am what I'm eating, Mario, I'm eating right now. You you know we have a lot of expressions in the English language. I don't even know what I'm saying. What are we talking about? Where did that come from? Most all of us use them every day. I don't even know what that means. No one knows what it means. You know we just say them as if they really made as sense. If they really made sense. I mean, how silly is that? What is good? You know who it is. You know what it is. It's a me, Mario. Welcome to a praise, the phrase, origins of everyday expressions, where we're here to do three things. Unveil the origin, confirm the meaning, and assess the value of everyday common phrases. I'm here with my man in season two, 20, 20 yeah. Williams. What's up, brother? I just want to let y'all know I'm from Miami and... Uh... <laughs> I just appreciate being on this show, Mario. You know what I mean? We're back for the second season, and it's uh, been one of the greatest things that I've ever done in my life. And I just want to let you know, you know, how thankful I am that you chose me to come back on this show. The, enough, you, I didn't choose you. I didn't choose you. The, cho <clears throat> the, the show chose you. You chose the show, and as the show was choosing you, bro. That's how it goes. No, I appreciate it, man. I, 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 not only am I, I a co-host, I am also a fan. Whoa. Let's get it started. Oh, well, without further ado, I want to welcome our guest of the day. Guest now, I'm morning. very excited. I'm very excited. We rolled into season two. It's been a while, and the guests just keep getting better to me. No offense to any guests prior, because you all were great. But I mean, the point, the point, right, is to keep getting better. So today, I want to welcome a good friend of mine. Needs no introduction, but about to get one. The homie who's blessing us, Chef Sue Ellen Drummond. What is the word? Hi, Mario. Hi, Chris. Oh, oh my government. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? What's it's because you on? got it right there. It's because I am right happy there. to be here. This is my first podcast, even though I listen to plenty of podcasts. Welcome, welcome. Hey, give her, give her, give her, you got a oh, little, uh, let's get it. Give her a little Welcome, it's your first podcast. Give her first podcast. Hey. Yeah. 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 I love love that. Love. Love, love. Season two, baby, we got, we got affiliates. Come on. I need you guys in my life all the time. All, hey, 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 just plug us. Just plug us. We'll be there. We'll be there. All right. Before we get started, before we jump into the phrase, tell us a little bit more about yourself, Sue Ellen. How, how, how can, how can the listeners and the viewers, because we, because how can the viewers get to know you? All right, so I'm Sue Drummond, uh, Sue Ellen Drummond, but a lot of people call me Sue. Um, I am a chef. I have been a chef in Boston, Brazil, New York, currently in San Diego. And I am now starting my own brand called Favela Bonita. Um, something what really- What was that again? What was that again? Say that uh, one more time. Favela Bonita. Uh, that's what I thought you said. Yeah, and it was started during COVID, one of those COVID passion projects, even though mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do it since the day I started being a chef. Brazilian cooking has always been my identity, um, and Favela Bonita is a celebration of Brazilian culture and its people, and more specifically, favela residents. And favelas, many people may not know, are like these neighborhoods in Brazil where you see in the pictures, the little houses on the hills, on the outskirts. Yep, yep, yep. yep. 
A lot of people know it from City of God. City of God. I was just about to say, my boy Rocket. Hey, hey, what? We haven't seen that movie. Yeah, everybody's seen that movie. But the thing is, a lot of people see City of God and the news, and they only see the negative, right? But nobody really knows the history and the culture that's in those locations. And we all know as African Americans and Afro Brazilians that we are the culture and we're exploited. And so much of Brazilian culture is in those favelas. And it's so unfair that we only see the marginalized um, view of it and the negative view of it. And there's so much good food there. There's and so much like, good food right. there. Hold on, Sue. I'm gonna stop you because I'm gonna let you. At the end of the show, you gonna we gonna let you stand on the soapbox. Yeah. You feel me? Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, you was ready. Sue's ready. Sue's yeah. Ready. And I like that's that that leads me into the phrase. So we're here today to talk about you are what you eat. I've yes. heard it. Twenty. Mm-hmm. You've heard it. I've heard it before. There we go. I don't know how many times you've said it out there. But I know okay. that it has impacted my life. I am thirty, a fresh thirty-five. Nah, not so fresh no more. Not so fresh no more. Fresh, uh, ripe, ripe thirty-five at this point. And I, it, it's it's impacted my life. Don't give me the. That's like, that's like. Thirty-five is a good age, man. No, bro. Trust me. I I, I was there before, so I, I understand how good thirty-five can be, man. So you know. <laughs> I've been there before. I've been there before. You know what I'm saying? I've been there once in my life. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, Sue, make sure you let people know. Not there yet. It's not even over the hill, but you're on the hill, okay? You're on the hill. Anyways, Mm -hmm. (laughs) let's get into the definition of you are what you eat. Before we do that, Sue, what's your connection to you are what you eat? Um, My whole life. My whole life I've been around food. My whole life, food has been part of who I am, and it has affected who I am. You are what you eat. Mm, There it is. There it is. Let's get into the definition to see if we are connecting in the right way. So Webster's Mm -hmm. defines you are what you eat. To be fit and healthy, you need to eat good food. Plain and simple. Good food to be fit and healthy. That's where we're at currently. Webster's Dictionary, we're always doing the current as we sit, as we talk definition now i have an opinion on the definition <laughs> but i'll reserve mine i reserve my def- 20 where you at with the definition of you are would you eat you know what honestly i was uh as a kid since i was always an overweight and lover you know what i'm saying <laughs> it, it, it it always hit me to the point where because it was more of a negative tone like when somebody's saying that to you it's more in a you are what you eat because you're not eating well, not as opposed to you are what you eat because this is this is great or this is uh, something for you to get fit in. You get what I mean? Like yeah. if it's like a situation where, hmm, like pork, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like I feel mm-hmm. like pork is still one of the most hated delicious foods on earth, <laughs> but it's like somebody who doesn't eat pork would look at you in a way of like, how can you eat that because of how how it lives or whatever the case may be? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was one of those situations for me. I always took it as like, you know, you need to stop eating what you're eating and eat something different. Got gotcha. you. So I guess it, it always came to me as a negative kind of vibe because it's great things out there and there's great food out there. And that doesn't mean you're eating it to be fit. I just feel like it's a situation of, you know, the quality. Quality. Good word. Word. Before I toss there's, it back, there's yeah, go, definitely go. the fit aspect. There's the fit aspect, but it's great that you brought up pork because it has a lot to do with culture too. Talk so, like, it. there's all these cultures that eat a lot of pork, but then there's people that, because of religion, they don't eat pork. They don't exactly. They don't eat pork. Exactly. And then, um, does that really have to do about uh, like with the physical, or is that more of like? the transfer of energy like i was thought Ooh. from a really young age that uh energy gets transferred through food and it's not like you know third world countries you don't have the best quality of food a lot of times that's not exactly. true in every in every country there's like a lot of countries that agriculture is so rich um mm-hmm. but there's countries that people don't really have like you make something out of nothing and yep. it's about like the energy that you transfer into food. Like you can make something out of just 
rice and beans. And you don't need like any of the fancy caviar or any of the fancy anything. Yep. And it's nutritious yep. and it's delicious and it was made with love. So I think a lot of it is I I look at the phrase as being a transfer of energy too. Yeah, and that's where I, I think I think Sue's story. going deep on this one. That was I think deep. Sue's going <laughs> deep. I think Sue's going deep. deep on this one. Hey, she, she hit you with that nine round on this one. Mario. I know you said, hey, you know what? We could be something else. <laughs> she 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 gave you a button hook. Thank you. <laughs> yep. I'm Look, and that's where I want to go. Thank you. That's where I want to go because the thing that stands out for me with the meaning is one fit, the fit part, because that's like push mm -hmm. it towards physical. So thank you for speaking to that, Dub. 20. In the good Appreciate part, it. which I'm throwing quotations on. Thank you, Sue, for saying like, what? When we saying good, are we saying purely good to my digestive system? Cause if yeah. there's any, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? So like good, good is the number one like opinionated word ever. Oh you my know gosh! What I'm oh like my gosh. I swear. it's used like fact, but it's oh my gosh! It's yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> like this, you you sit up here, you can say something is good for one man is definitely not good for another. So how to how are you defining something good if it's not good for oh, every, man. everybody? How do we get yeah. there? How do we get there? All right, mm -hmm. how we get there? The origins of things, the roots the of origins. Things. So let's get into the more what you are, what you eat. Okay, this is going back to 1826, okay? Mm. Eight, 1826, a French lawyer by the name of Antime Brillat Savarin. I don't know if that was French or not. Bro, he you wrote, hit that. You hit that, bro. You see the, uh, the you tongue? That. I know, I'm trying, right? I'm trying. Yeah. The, <laughs> he wrote the f f f Physiology du Gout. Ou mediations de gastronomie transcendante. Yeah? Oh, I hear you, bro. Yeah? Hey, did you okay. practice this in the mirror? You have I, had, to. I had all weekend. I had all weekend to get the title <laughs> down. <laughs> all right, but so that's basically a book where he he's uh he wrote in there, tell me what you eat and I will tell you what you are. That's where oh, the wow. first printed version of this phrase coming from um, this French lawyer, and we're gonna call him Big Ant, okay? Big yeah, Ant, yeah, yeah, yeah. got it. Uh, Big Ant BS. Go. So, Big Ant, Jean Antel Brillant Savarin, for those that really want to look him up, he was a lawyer and a politician. Let's dig into who this man is. Why should we care that this person said this is the first person to say this? He was a French, he was a, what's up? Oh, no, I'm sorry to cut you off, Mario, go ahead, but go you ahead. said like in the 1800s, like a lot of people were like, class driven you get what yes. i'm saying so so from you telling me what he's done is 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 me hearing that he's had to be somewhat in the upper class to say that and i feel like going back to my personal experiences you know what i'm saying <laughs> like i feel like for him to say something like that is him saying okay if you're eating less or if you're eating scraps then you're scraps you get what i'm saying like if It'll you're get there. eating yeah, are we going to get there? Let's go. Let's I'm go. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. whenever, whenever people are going towards that saying, it's, it's like you said, it's more than food. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. an energy. It's a, it's a, it's them trying to, uh, I would say put you in a box, but put you in a certain classified in the area. You get in what the I mean? area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought about it that way when you're, when looking back at the origin. So listen, let's see, let's see, let's see. So is this man prominent? That's why we gotta dig. Yeah, There's more than just exactly. finding out when it was said, who said it, and mm -hmm. what about that dude or, or or young man, one young lady, whatever. So young aunt, young aunt gained fame as an epicure. Now an epicure, do we know what that is? I didn't. So that's why I have the definition ready. I don't want to, yeah. for anybody that knows what it is, excuse me, I'm not saying you're slow. I did not know what it was. So that's why I'm giving the definition. An epicure is one with a sensitive and discriminating taste, especially for food and wine, or one devoted to central pleasure in gastronomy. So mm -hmm. gastronomy, Sue, can snob. you break us down? Yeah, he's like a food snob. Wow, see, oh, there it is. See, hey, it's like, starting to come together. It's starting to come together. He's like, I don't even want to try this. That man's a food snob. Long story short, the Bobby, French, bro. the French got a funny Bobby, way of bro. telling you. The French got a no offense to the French. Okay, so 
He, that's how he became famous. And he's one of two writers who founded the whole genre of the gastronomic essay. This is a big deal. So gastro pubs and stuff. Yes, like that. all that that's stuff. Who says, so, he I mean, created. The I still essay. don't know what a gastro pub is, Sue. So I'll be honest with you, but uh, is that kind of like what that is, or a gastro pub? From my understanding, it's like a bar that has food, a gathering, okay. a place of gathering with food. Am I wrong? Uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, honestly, that's what I thought it was too. So I, hey, you know what? Chuck E. Cheese is a gastro Two wrongs, pub. Don't make it right. <laughs> There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. All right, let's get let's get through this first round of origin. So now my man Ant, who's considered the father of the low carb diet, dog, in the eighteen hundreds, mid eighteen hundreds. Wait, mid-1800s. what, bro? They had fad diets then, huh? They had fad diets well, in the eighteen like hundreds. It's hard for no obesity, bro. Obesity. Is- <laughs> They've been hounding people for this for so long. Okay, so he's the father oh, of the low carb diet. He considered sugar and white flour to be the cause of obesity, and he suggested he suggested protein-rich ingredients. He also promoted the diet that avoided starch, grains, sugar, flour, and anything that we... He recommended meats, root vegetables, cabbage, and fruit. All right, Sue, so off this. First dude that said it, young ant, big ant, whatever. How you feeling about it as we sit? I mean... I think he was kind of ahead of time, even though he was a food snob. Like, let's look at all that people are telling us to eat now, you know? Even though even though it is still a fad diet and you just got to do what's best for your own body, I am all for eating more fruits and vegetables. I like that. I'm fair enough. Yeah. Heard that. Fair enough. I don't know. I think, I think he was ahead of his time. There we go. Okay. Yeah, especially the 1800s. In the 1800s, you're telling people only to eat rice, and and pretty much that's all they had anyway. I, I, maybe in my my uh, just uh, maybe I'm not, I guess, imagining the 1800s like I'm supposed to imagine the 1800s, but I'm pretty sure. Watch more movies, twenty. Yeah, I guess I guess that's what it is. I need to watch more 1800 movies to understand how it really was back in the day. But then, but then back in the day. I imagine most people made their their like, but a lot of uh, agriculture was their main way of making money. Yeah, you know, yeah. selling selling their grains at farmers market and yep. whatnot. Yep. I feel like I feel like to grow fruits and vegetables, you need a lot more finances than like to grow grains. Right, 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 and that's Flour interesting. And whatnot. Pretty, Pretty much we, land. I mean, yeah. you need the land to to do it. So, like, what what? It wasn't no cheeses back then, you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't no, you know, lace potato chips back then. So it's like, mm-hmm. if if he's saying, you know, what what more than vegetables, fruit, and and protein did they have to eat back? Then? You get right. what I mean? There wasn't no Kool Aid back then. It sounds mm-hmm. like the classism, and I'm not saying it's intentional. We're not there yet. We're not talking about intentional classism, but oh, we need to go there. We will. <laughs> Let's go. We will, but. <laughs> He's saying that the things that are cheaper to produce, from, from what I'm hearing Sue say, are the things you probably should steer clear from. Now, sugar, we can all agree, agree, disagree, but like there's sugar has its um has its results. That's all I'll say. But I also want to say as a former former athlete and I got into the, this a little bit as far as understanding nutrition, is like all sugars aren't created equal any anyways, any fucking way. So I don't wanna go there. All right. We got and we got you. Wait, what? <laughs> All sugars and like a banana sugar is not the same as a Starburst sugar, bro. Like in that sense, okay. you feel yeah. what I'm saying? Okay. So yeah. you can't be like I, I heard. I heard. I'll never forget this. I was in some grocery store, and one of the workers they was talking about their lunch break or whatever, and he was like, "You gonna grab a banana for lunch?" And the dude said, "No, too much sugar." Now I don't know if he's on a diabetic scale or whatever on the spectrum, but I'm like, dude, you are reading the wrong things. That's all I want mm-hmm. to say about that. Yeah. Eat the banana, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Eat the banana, okay? All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My man, Frenchie. I love Frenchie. that smoke he just gave somebody. That I know, whoever. Really if he's, he's going to be listening, like, I, I remember if that. You're listening, if you're listening. If you're listening, sir, bro. Sir, at Star Market. listening. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was listening to your conversation. Because I was eavesdropping. <laughs> <laughs> As I was eavesdropping and then judging. All right. So, soon after that. So, we got 1826. Young aunt, French uh-huh. lawyer. Uh-huh. Tell me what you eat. I will tell you what you are. Mm-hmm. 1863, 64, 
a young German man comes in. Now, this is where you know I'm a stunt. The young German man comes in. Ludwig Andres Fauerbach <laughs> continued the essence in an essay titled Concerning Spiritualism and Materialism. So off the title, we see where he's coming from with the phrase. Mm-hmm. Concerning yeah, Spiritualism Spirit. and Materialism. Yep. Yeah. He wrote. Oh, yeah. I can't wait, Sue. I can't <laughs> wait, dog. I like, hey. Mario, I'm so excited you picked this because I didn't. I'll be honest with you. Let me just kind of note this because this this is something. This is why I always say this probably 75% of the show. This is why the show is so important, man, because you go in with one simple, simple mindset and you come out with just like, dude, what the is it more? Is it more? And sometimes it is more, bro. And sometimes it's, it's just worth it to figure out is it more? And when you find out, it, it, mm-hmm. it's it's There's delightful. Life. And it's, yeah, it's always more. It's moment, always cool. more, bro. We're going to come back to see where we're talking. Like, are you telling me in a negative connotation? Are you telling me to uplift? We'll get back to it. But so, Ludwig Feuerbach, he wrote, I'm going to say it in German first because I got to use it or you lose it. Okay. Der Mensch ist was er ist. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, I know, I know German. And that Bro, means, take off the turtleneck. I can't believe you just had a turtleneck moment. Please. <laughs> oh, man. I'm y'all sorry, seen the that's promo. A, that's a y'all seen between the promo. Me and yeah, y'all it's seen just... the promo. That turtleneck. I'll PSA the turtleneck moment. Like, I don't really. <laughs> okay. Did y'all get the joke? Okay. Anyway. So, Dimensh Isht Vas Er Isht means man is what he eats. Okay. So, he didn't even uh-huh. remix it that much. He just said it in German, basically. So, Ludwig, he was a German anthropologist. Okay. German anthropologist and philosopher. So he's just here to thinking. He's just getting to thinking and writing. All right. And this is only about what? 40 years later, let's say, from uh, the French dude. And Mm -hmm. he was best known for his book, The Essence of Christianity. So he wrote that before he wrote this other book. So you know you're getting you getting plays, you're getting streams, you're getting burns, you're getting likes, you're getting when you write about Christianity back in the eighteen hundreds. You know what I'm saying? You're getting you're getting the what is it? What's you're getting the engagement. Your engagement numbers are through the roof mm-hmm. when you talk yeah. Christianity back then, because that's the whole thing. Like, is God real? What are we doing? Why is everything? It's prime that's content. All... Yes, mm-hmm. it's the content that people want to hear. So he provided a critique of Christianity back then that strongly influenced a generation of thinkers. Now, now, when I name these folks off, and we don't talk about Mr. Lou Big Firebox, we don't talk about him, but his sons. No. <laughs> we talk. So he influenced Darwin. Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud. Mm. Wait, this guy? This guy who said man is what he eats. Uh, Friedrich Engels, don't know him. Richard Wagner, popular English one. Yeah. And Nietzsche. Nietzsche? <laughs> not, not, that is not mine. That, that is, is Nietzsche. Not mine. That's not it. So he influenced all these <laughs> folks. And uh, he brought, uh, he brought wow, it the bro. use in the, the phrase in a spiritual sense. So he, he took it from the, the food snob sense and went straight spiritual. Like, Hey, you are what you eat in the sense that what you're doing, where, where, where Sue was, was getting at it. So I'm going to take it back to Sue and say, now that you're here just 40 years later, a little bit less, it gets introduced purely as a spiritual phrase. Where you at with it? Well, I'm thinking at that time, like you said, you're talking about Christianity. It's also trying mm-hmm. to make sure people are like in line of what they're thinking that is right politically and religiously, right? Yeah. Um, and I think, I think, of course, today we have freedom of speech, freedom of religion. You are what you eat, but like you can be so many things, whatever you choose to be. But let's talk about like what you intake in that spiritual sense. I do think that food is a transfer of energy, like physically, how much energy you put into the food that you're making. But then now that you said that what he was thinking, what he was saying, I'm thinking social media, I'm thinking like the news, I'm thinking like the books you're reading, you have the choice in like your fingertips of what you're taking in. And it's like, do I want to sit after I come home from work and scroll through Instagram or TikTok for like the silliest things, or do I want to like sit and <laughs> zoom scroll and like hear about coronavirus and and the war like for five hours? 
you know? Exactly. At some point, um, at some point, you're like, it's all the same content, you know? You're just hearing it differently. Give her, no, let's give no. her a plug in. Let's give her a plug in for now. Yeah, you got to come with the ad when you hit that second one. Hey, 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 listen. Hey, hey. If, if I am what I'm eating, Mario, I'm eating right now. I'm eating right now. I'm eating right now, dog. This is, this is, this is, I'm eating right now, bro. This is Michelin star. Thank you, so uh, And I want to uh, say, like, no, nah, come on now. Now I want to say, like, that takes it back to you said something very, very crucial. You said at some point it's all the same content. And at what stage do we be that like, hit, that hit right there, bro. <laughs> we be like, I'm going to just eat what I want, dog. Yeah, like on the it's food all level, the same. It's, it's at the all end of the day, dog. Like I'm hungry day, and I'm bro. gonna eat what I want. I've been trying. Let's say even fad diet, folks. I've been trying. I've been trying. You know what? Today I'm eating whatever I want. And and when you take out the food aspect of it, it's even more because it's like, you know what, man? I've been trying to be conscious. I've been trying to be up with what's on the world, like you said, and it's mm -hmm. nothing but sadness. You know what? I'm going to go on Instagram. I'm going to go on Instagram for the thirst because the thirst <laughs> always wins. You get what I'm saying? So it's like a situation where it's always, it's going to give you the same thing, regardless of the platform. It's going to give you the same yeah. exact thing. And it's like, what are you taking in? But then now you have the choice of what you're taking in, you know? Like, do I want to sit home? Do I want to sit home and doom scroll all day and then go to work and be negative and keep thinking about that thing that I doom scrolled? The day yeah. before or do i want to like actually like start reading these books that are gonna like inspire me to do better and change the world actually it's yeah. it, we're living through everything right now you oh, know how yeah, you how in 2020 we were like can it get any worse than this and then it did and then, and then yeah. in 2021 we're like it can't get any worse than this and look at how we are now and then <laughs> no, exactly you're right about that Exactly. You don't know. You're so right. You're so but then right. we have to figure out a way to stay positive and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bring out positivity. And that could be through your diet, which I think is super important, especially as an athlete, you can talk, you can speak for yourself and what you take in as information. Yes. Yes. We nibbling regardless, whether it be oh, yeah. food or mm -hmm. we nibbling, we nibbling. All right. So it's just not just the intake of, of, you know, good things when you're eating, it's the intake of, you know, good conversation. Stand take good, you know, good information. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I think oh, yeah. that's, that's what we meant. At the, well. time, at the time, it was just <laughs> Christianity. We just want to feed you Christianity, and you, this is how it means yeah. to be a good Christian. Yep. Eat, and you, and whatever you eat, don't be eating like them. That's where it gets to. Don't eat like them. Mm -hmm. All right. Segwaying, flipping, flipping gears. Also, let me um shout out. I bring it back. I bring it back. My bad, y'all. I bring it back. All right, so the phrase didn't migrate to other languages. My bad. <laughs> Wait, bro. Who are you talking to? I've been wondering. You did that like four or five times like you talked to the audience. Do you have an audience in there? Or... My bad, bro. It's just, who is he talking to? <laughs> what? That's you were best, bro. I thought you had somebody in the studio while you were talking to. I'm like, who is he got in the studio? Tell him to say what's up. <laughs> no, no, no. That's why he's so good. Didn't have anyone in the studio. They would never. <laughs> <laughs> David Ruffin in the Y'all better. David Ruffin in the tip. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, moving man. on. Moving Sorry, on, bro. Moving on. Sorry. I, I, never took it. Never took it. Yeah. I appreciate it. There you go. 20 shout out. There we go. All right. So the phrase didn't migrate to other languages. So right now we're talking French and German. Dominating. Mm -hmm. Dominating the conversation. What you are, what you eat. In ways. It didn't reach other languages, especially English until the 1930s okay so it took, it took it took some time some decades and then it was officially an american nutritionist named victor linlar who was a strong believer in the idea that can, food controls health and he developed the catabolic diet do you know what that is sue the catabolic diet i don't mm -mm. me neither all right i didn't even dig into it i live in california and i've heard of all <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So maybe this one doesn't sound like a California diet. I'm not, <laughs> the, uh, just, but it sounds like something that comes out of Southern California where it never rains. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you're watching, you listening, let us know. You like, yo, I'm all about. The, I've been living off the catabolic diet since I got here, <laughs> and I've lost and I lost 45 pounds. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead and plug your little. Like, diet. come on, Mario. Give Mario. Yeah. The go ahead and plug it <laughs> on IG, please. I want to see it. Go ahead and plug that, man. But. Along with that diet was the first time in English the printed version of this 
surfaced. Okay, so it was 1923, and it was an advertisement of the Bridgeport Telegraph. Bridgeport, I don't know what state. Um, and for the United Meat Markets. And the, the advertisement said 90% of the diseases known to man. That's a wild number to say. Sorry. That's Back to the quote. <laughs> that number. threw me off. Everybody. <laughs> That's All right, diseases, yeah. dog. That, when you say 90%. 90% of the diseases known to man are caused by cheap foodstuffs. You are what you eat. And I am willing to bet, I'm going to let y'all have the floor. I have to say, I am willing to bet this man, Victor, did not research the meeting because he said what he meant, and then he just threw the phrase at the end. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> talk to me. Talk to me. Yep. Where you at with that, man? <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, back then. Yeah, take it to the time, Sue. You got to take it into the time. So women want to get no respect. Black people are getting the respect. No. You know, like, like you got to take it in when you said it to. That's huge. I think, I think the classism goes like that goes way back to the classism again. You know? And then like we're hearing who who is saying these things. <laughs> it's definitely going back to the classism. Yeah. And you know, I do have, if we want to go back in time and look back at uh -huh. history, right? So my favorite dish is called um, feijoada, right? And a lot of countries have their own version. It's a black bean stew with pork, but it's like all the subparts of pork, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look back, it's part of Brazilian culture. Everybody's like, oh my God, Sue, you're Brazilian, make feijoada for me. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, I can only make feijoada on Sunday, Sundays. And they're like, why? So feijoada in Brazil, is an African uh, dish. And it was made because um, the slaves used to have all the subpars. So like the food snobs were like, I only eat the loin of the pork, but then there's all these parts. So oh, they were talking about chitlins. <laughs> like, that's pretty much like, that's pretty much like all they had to eat. And of course you have to eat, right? Yes. So yeah, they would make this stew, but a lot of them couldn't eat pork religiously for Ubanda religion. Uh -huh. So then they would make the stew on Sunday and dance afterwards to kind of like purge, like cleanse your soul, yep. you know, and then yep. you look at it and you look at the, the classism part where it's like, oh, I only eat the loin and you have to eat all these subpars, even though it's not for your religion, but you're forced to eat this, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. thinking that kind of stuff too. Like when you look at the what they used to think back in the day, like of certain people not being worthy. So here you go, you have to eat the nose, you have to eat the tail, you have to eat the feet. And it's not even something that you eat in your religion. Right, come on, so now, that's true. So nowadays, nowadays when people ask me like, oh, can you make feijoada for me? I'm like, no, for respect of the history, I only make it on Sunday. There it is. Feijoada Sundays. There it is wow. for the Sundays. Thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. living it up to it. And thank you for that education, man. Thank you for I that love education. when we have personal experiences on here, man. Yeah, because that's, that's all it is. Data is one personal experience times. So when you say, when we when we talk about the classism of that poor, the, the cheap food, that's what I'm thinking. It's like a way to kind of like classify people. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly not, what I feel. I, honestly, 90% of me believe that's exactly what he meant. Yeah. That's <laughs> Thing that came to me like that dish. It's the stress. It's the stress that y'all. Ninety percent of these it was just like, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, come on, dog. Yeah, bro. Come on, I can't dog. even go in there to buy no. I can't even go in there to buy no bread. You feel me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so what? What do you think I'm eating? You feel me? I got to make my bread from at home. Now, now, we talked about we talked about how um, old buddy from Germany, Louis Fauerbach, used. Um, for your back, mm -hmm. use Christianity as like, okay, I don't know if he was, I think he was sincere, but that was the way to talk about things and get hurt. Now, <laughs> this man, Linlar, is doubling up on that, right, in American culture, which is, you know what I'm saying, capitalism, all that bullshit. And 1942, the phrase entered the mass public consciousness in America because I think once he saw that advertisement go crazy by adding you are what you eat at the end of his very biased phrase or biased stat, he said uh, he wrote a book <laughs> or published You Are What You Eat. And then it was a way to win and keep health with a diet. It was like pulling people. You are what you eat contest. <laughs> and then he took to the radio to say this. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And so talks in, from the thirties to the fifties that no one can recover because probably very racist, uh, radio shit. Um, reached, that's how it reached the mass audience. So he's every week you are what you eat. Come talk on the radio, enter a chance to win whatever a healthy lifestyle would have been there. So you talk about access to the radio. You talk about mm -hmm. access, who's going to get on the line. And we like we really we really leveling up this classism shit here. Um, let's see. The phrase wasn't much used years after uh, Linville stopped the radio broadcast because whatever. But <laughs> uh, and that phrase started to blossom because it kind of got reversed in my head because yeah. the hippie generation started to say you are what you eat as a, like a microbiotic whole food. And the phrase was adopted by them for a slogan of healthy eating. And that's where like it really as we know it. It's like it, it that is where it stands today. The hippie mm -hmm. said, You are what you eat, yeah. and they were spreading it. And we learned how that works. I don't know, Sue. Your time in Boston, talk to me about your time in Boston because for me, all love to Boston, but the 1960s hippies that were like free love, all that stuff, except <laughs> stay in your neighborhoods. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, Woodstock, but don't move into yeah. my neighborhoods. That's how my experience and the progressive experience I've had in Boston is like, yes, 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 nonprofit, money, 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 money. Yep. But, <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Talk to me about that, Sue. How, did you did you am I am I am I alone in that experience? Did you experience that at all while while there? No, no. Um I grew up in Boston. So to me, I thought that was like normal. You know, like, you know, when you grow up with stuff and you're like, don't realize because you think like that's this is how everybody thinks like there's no there's like no yeah, reason for you to fight it, you know, like this is how it is. And that's how it is. And then like when I actually got to like college, I was like, got to see other things. I'm like, no, this isn't OK. And then coming back to Boston, I was like, wow, I thought Boston was so liberal. I thought like Boston was like so so up and forward and then like when you actually get to like meet those people and like you're like oh so you're just putting up a front mm, like would you rather be like up in front like very exposed or would you rather it be like that kind of like yes i'm a hippie but don't come over here like i've always wondered that yeah i don't know Which man like that's, prefer? that's the, okay 20 she asking you what do you prefer the up front or the hidden gym Dude, you know what? I prefer more of an upfront approach because mm -hmm. I'll be that person that think everything cool and walk up in the crib, go in the fridge. You feel me? Like <laughs> I'm, I'm that guy. Like so, if you make me feel comfortable, you're gonna see me at my, at my comfort. You get what I'm saying? And it's just like because that's just who I am. I'm I'm I am who I am. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like when it comes to people, I. I'm gonna give you that upfrontness. I'm gonna show you that respect up front. And I just hope that you do it to me too as well. Cause uh, uh, guessing what type of people are, what type of person you are and stuff like that. I, that's, that's too much for me right now. In my yeah, life. Imagine growing up with that. Oh, like, see. Code switching, code switching is so natural. You don't even realize you're doing it. Dude, that's crazy <laughs> exactly. to me, man. You know, that's crazy to me. When I learned the phrase, I'm like, oh, that's what I've been doing my whole life. Code switching. Code switching. Wow. The whole time. Wow. wow. It's because right, yeah, Boston I has so much Boston has so much old money though. Yeah. That's what it is. The bureau that's the, the bureaucracy, thing. the old boys. It's, it's like bad. I have old money and I wanna feel better and I'm gonna donate to all of these organizations, nonprofits, but then like my mindset's still not different. Right. Definitely not different. Is that is, is that what you experienced, Mario? A little yes. bit. Yes, that's exactly when I got into it. I'm like, oh, y'all just champion like the names of the stuff, and kind mm -hmm. of like y'all y'all do turn it off. Like when five o'clock hits and the foundation closes, it's over. <laughs> it's a wrap. Like, Seriously, bro. I'm bro, sorry. Then they man, go back crazy, to their lives, bro. and it's like I still think you shouldn't be here after dark. It's that type of thing. Like those natural biases kick right the fuck back in. Right Bro, you know when you say that when you say that um it reminds me of the movie uh, one, uh the one night in miami movie and it's a scene with uh jim brown and he goes to this guy's house right and he's talking to jim brown on like oh i'm a huge fan oh this man you did this so much for syracuse and blah, 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 blah. and he's just like at all with jim brown right 
in Hollywood general, all white men. And then all of a sudden, the um, something happens in the house, and Jim goes, "You need you need me to help you out." And, and he turns and looks at him. And he's like, "Jim, you know we don't let we you know we're like not simple, like, you know like very like, specific and simple." Like, bro, like I was like that moment, in, it, 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 and if that really, really, and I'm assuming that really happened to Jim Brown, and I feel like that was the moment where he, because they they made it seem like that was the moment where he took on the activist. The yeah, you know yeah, yeah, getting yeah. out of the front way of trying yeah, to yeah, yeah. please you know certain people, so it, it, it was that moment. And I'm just and that hit me, bro. I was like, "Dang, bro, do you get what I'm saying?" Yeah, like, like yeah, as yeah, as yeah. watching the movie, I'm watching the movie. And I'm like, "Yo, there's there are people that are really like that. They'll be up here and praise yeah. you and, yeah. and and sit up here and say your cooking's amazing, da 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 da. But then all of a sudden, you know." If somebody, oh, nah, you know, I'm, I'm, nah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Nah, yeah, no, Sue, you're going to get your own, like, you oh, get your Sue, own yeah, taxi, yeah, right? <laughs> you're not going to run a taxi. Yeah, like, so, yeah, exactly, right? I mean, I don't think, I don't even oh, think it's only about location, you know? I think that stuff is present everywhere. I've been feeling it a lot lately because, like, my brand is, like, about marginalized people, right? Yeah. And it's, like, it's pro-black. And it's, like, one yeah. thing, like, if you're black, like here's an applause, but like if you're pro black, it's like, oh, maybe that's a liability. You yeah, know? exactly. No, or you're like, right. Or like even an employer, like applying for jobs, like this is who I am and this is what I stand for. And it's almost like, oh, you can stand for that, but don't stand for that too much because then you're a liability to us, you know? Yeah. No, that's like, right. that's you're so right terrible. That. Like down here, it's, it's more like a situation where, you know, like the whole, you know the black owned movement mm -hmm. uh, you know everybody's so for black owned but they only want to go to black owned uh, establishments on brunch <laughs> you know what i'm saying like and it's like it is it's not it's not only good at brunch you can come in here on a tuesday night and get an amazing dinner you get right. what i'm saying you don't have to just come here on a sunday to get lit and and and, and party and stuff like that like it's just a situation like like that in itself the the actual event masks it masks really what people are really and how people really feel you get yeah. what i'm saying like yeah they're going to support you on brunch because they you know it looks great on instagram to go somewhere for brunch and take pictures but then again you know monday through saturday where you at exactly. or 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 when they support you and it's almost like they're doing you a favor and it's like no like you're coming to me because my service is amazing my service right. is exceptional like right. i get paid what i get paid because i'm exceptional at what i do i know my work I, i'm over here minding my fret <laughs> like this is all from a book that i read recently from ajaya ajaya jones and she says i'm over here minding my front and you come to me for my services and then you want to act like you're doing me a favor because i'm mm. black no shout out to miss jones I deserve. and i think it's the same thing for businesses it's like a lot of businesses, they're like, oh, I want to support black owned businesses, but I don't want to pay the price. Right. Right. I'm with that. It's but like, they'll go into, uh, hey, man, like, you know what? Out of you your head. You are what you eat, man. Hey, you are what you eat, man. It's good. Hey, no better time. No better time because we are heated up. I feel you on that one, Sue, because Lord knows they'll go in somebody else's establishment and, and, and throw a bag. You feel me? Just to, just to say I went there or just to just say I got a there. reservation there. But yeah, you don't want to go over here and, mm -hmm. and 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 show love. You feel like, like you say, I'm coming here off of a favor. I'm doing you a favor. No, no, you're not. You, you're a consumer. Yeah. You're trying to look for something great to do. Yeah. Like, and you wow. know, looking looking back at that of you are what you eat, right? As a chef, whenever you put something on the menu that might be like European, let's let's talk about like lobster for an example, right? Lobster, even in Boston, is considered like. Oh my God, lobster. Let me put a price of like $80 on a lobster. And because it's lobster, I'm not saying lobster is cheap, but because it's put $80 on a lobster, because it's lobster, people will pay for it, right? And, exactly. and then you put like, let's say a Brazilian fish stew that has a history very similar to the feijoada that I, that I did, that I explained to you, which I have put on the menu before. And a server has asked me like, oh, so, Chef Su, like you're like when you're explaining this dish, I'm thinking like it's more like a peasant food, right? And I'm like, no, 
Would you call like when you're explaining lobster to your guests? Do you explain lobster as a as a peasant food? Because that's originally how lobster came to be. Exactly. Like just because it has this history, you're not going to explain it as peasant food. Hey Sue, you need to do a podcast called "Appraise the Food." Yeah, I can, I can go on and on. There's so many like the way that people explain food because of like who's making it. You gotta, you got people don't really know the history of a lot of things and, and popularity, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's one thing that me and Mario try to debuff because popularity is something that controls people's perspective. You know what I'm saying? And it's just because it's popular in some sorts doesn't mean that it's the best thing. You get what I'm saying? Like it, mm-hmm. it could be, like you said, with lobster as opposed to a good Dover sole or a good, you know what I'm saying? Like people yeah. don't know too much about a certain fish or a certain crustacean, but then you hear lobster mac, you can charge you can charge a hundred dollars for a lobster mac. You going crazy. <laughs> All right, look. Look, we in the perfect for the energy right, is Mario. up. The energy is up. Let's grade. Let's, Let's grade, grade man. Let's grade. So Let's grade, man, because I got Sue, a, I got a power grade for your ass. For your ass. I'm gonna give you the power grade then. So Sue, we Thank grade you, these phrases on three things, okay? So three different mm-hmm. components. The twenties gonna handle the power grade. The power grade is does it get to the point? You feel me? Does it mm-hmm. get straight to the point? Does it have impact when you when you hear it? Okay, mm-hmm. how it makes you feel when you hear it? Okay, so mm-hmm. power grade is the A through F scale because we went to school in America or whatever. So A through F twenty, where you at on it? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I give this a A plus on Power Mario, not just because of it gets to the point, but I feel like people use it in a power sense too as well. Like yeah. you can. It's one of those phrases that if you say it can, if you're a weak minded person, you can get controlled by this phrase. You get what I'm saying? Like somebody that can use this phrase to control you. And like Buddy said, like he's made all these diets just by saying you are what you eat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and the yeah. people that are, don't have that, that, that stronger, you know, opinion of themselves are, or like I said, that are weak minded will take that and run with it and it'll let it control their life. It'll yes, let this, this phrase has controlled so many people's lives to the point where they don't really know what's good or what's bad. What's good and what's bad. Hey, so what you giving it? I'll give it an A plus, man. A plus. It's very powerful, bro. A, 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 A. Power grade. Boom. All right. Speed grade. Does it flow off the tongue? Is it easy to say? Is it easy to hear? You know what I'm saying? Speed grade. Eloquent. You are what you eat. Now, <laughs> Again, we're not talking about our opinion of it. We just strictly speak. You are what you eat is that's poetry, dog. It's that's that's yeah. part of the power. That's part of its power. That's part of yeah. why it's been so impactful and so infectious. So I won't go with that. I'm gonna give that also a A. A A for oh, yeah. speed. All right. Yeah, Sue, man. you hold us down with the final grade. This is the guest. Preference grade. So all things considered, we don't heard the origin, the current meaning, power, impact, everything combined. How you use it in your, will you keep using it in your everyday life? All that stuff. What do you give it? A through F. I give it an A. I I am almost to an A plus, but this conversation made me think of it in so many other ways. And as Twenty said, be cautious of who you're saying it to and how you're saying it. Right. You know, right. like because mm-hmm. before I used to use it and of course I always thought it had a variety of content and if you think about it it's like the way you're saying it, who you're saying it to and what you're trying like the point you're trying to make cuz mm-hmm. it could it's so widely used. Absolutely. So you're saying, "Hey, oh, this was a good phrase, bro." Hey. Hey, on the phrase. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. Sue, it's time. Before I give you before I give you the floor to tell us more about your brand. I want to mm-hmm. shout out my man, young, uh, what was his name again? Young Ant from Friend. He had sure. bars, too. If you want to look him up, he said one quote that I just wanted to put out there because, Sue, I think, you know, it might resonate. He got a bunch of quotes. He said, whoever receives friends and does not participate in the preparation of their meal does not deserve to have friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're not helping them take hey, your the, aunt. The uh, OTF. Dog. OTF. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anywho, I'm gonna use that. It's my next. Oh. It's it's gonna be my next uh, Instagram caption. 
Yeah, oh, yeah I'll yeah, send it yeah, to you. Yeah, I'll send yeah, you the yeah, quote, yeah, my yeah, man. Yeah, 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 bro. Make sure you remind me. But, Sue, talk to us more about the brand. Okay. So, Favela Bonita. Mario, I think when we met, I was already talking about, like, starting a Brazilian food truck. Yep, yep. Um, I've always been in Michelin star restaurants. <clears throat> um, these restaurants where it's highly acclaimed. And one of my first Michelin star restaurants, I was able to put a Brazilian dish on the menu that we kind of spoke about, like a moqueca, which is like a Brazilian fish stew. A lot of people used to look at it as peasant food. And that opened my eyes to like how valuable my food is, you know, and the, my culture, my the history of my culture of Brazil. And anywhere that I've worked, I always wanted to have that identity. I'm not always just doing a chef's food, but I'm going to put my little signature in that restaurant especially if I have menu freedom. And that created kind of like my identity as a chef, you know? I'm a classically French uh, trained chef who values culture, who wants to show culture and wants to show the people behind the food. Because food is not just about what you're eating, it's like who made it, the history of it. Why is it important? Why is it such a big part of somebody's culture? How it affects you? Hence why I chose the phrase, you know? how it affects how you're feeling, it makes you happy. Food is my passion, but Brazilian culture is also my passion. And I always wanted to show the side of Brazil that people had a misconception about. And yes. the idea of Favela Bonita first started as um, Brazilian street food with French techniques. So people, when they think about Brazilian food, they think of rustic, fried, fatty, but I wanted to like elevate it, you know, meaning not all food in Brazil is fried fatty and putting different techniques to it. Um, when COVID happened, I was home like everybody else. I decided seeing all of my friends in the culinary world start their own brand, put it out there through content. Um, I decided to start Favela Bonita as the brand, explaining it to people. And I felt very moved because the brand always had a story of marginalized people behind it. And at the time of summer 2020, that was important for me to put out, you know? Um, favelas are made out of mo like black people. And it started because after the abolition of slavery, um, the slaves weren't granted any land. So they were forced to be put in the favelas and create their own communities. Um, and the government had no part to do with it. Even like recently when the World, World World Cup happened in Brazil, that's when they started kind of getting involved. So they had to figure out their ways. They have their own culinary world. Like they're like African inspired food that they make there. And I wanted to show that to the world, but in the beautiful sense, not the sense of like, this is the city of God, or like, this is where I see that like people die, no. Like, this is, like, how did it start? Why is it important? And the community aspect that happens in favelas. This is a long topic, of course, but how do I know how to do that through food and explaining the history of food, you know? Mm -hmm. And right. showing people that the food could be beautiful and it is inspired by my experience in the favelas. That community, oh, right. like, people making food together on a Sunday, rolling brigadeiros, which is the chocolate that I made, like around the table, you know, and like inviting your neighbors, very like warm, very like celebratory. It's always a celebration. Food is always a celebration. There it is. You know, I love that. and, right. and, and that, that's, the, that's the name, Favela Bonita, the beauty of the favela. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to show the world through food, show the culture, like, Come in the come come in this journey with me, you know, and right. and if I if I'm gonna go cook at this three Michelin star restaurant as a guest, I'm gonna bring that with me. It might look a little bit different, but the root is always going to be that favela bonita because that's who I am. That's why I grew up, and that's what I want to show the world. Now we not go. Hey, hey, I'm following. I'm hungry, ride. bro. Hey, hey, I'm ready. Right. Right. Get hungry. some of this food, man. <laughs> hey, where, 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 where can the people find you, Sue? Where can the people find you? Um, so through Instagram, my Instagram is Sue Favela, which that was way before Favela Bonita, and then Favela Bonita SD, 
in San Diego, and then favelabonita.com. All right, cool. We're going to put all that in the show notes. Make sure you tap in, tap in tap, and support. Tap, 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 yeah. I'm going to be posting. You'll, we'll be posting things from the Appraise the Phrase podcast on IG of Sue's work, beautiful work on Appraise Phrase on Twitter, on uh, our YouTube page, everything. So thank you very much, Sue. Before you get out of here, mm-hmm. I got two more things to ask you. Well, I got one thing and Dub got one thing. First thing I'm going to ask you is, now that we got the phrase done and all said and done, is it a currently? Currently, how you where do you think the phrase is? Is it spot on or are we using it, you know what I'm saying, the way it ain't supposed to be used? No, I think I think it depends on the messenger. I think I think we're using it right. We're using it, it, it right. It depends on the messenger. It depends on the the intent of the messenger. There it is. There it is. We won't give it out of context. It ain't out of context. We're within context, and I love it. Dub. I, I, I think I think it's I think it's more. I'm a, I, if if I can't just piggyback on that. Yeah. I think it's timing too as well, man. You know what I mean? Like like it like you said, it it, it does depend on who's saying it, but it's a, it's about timing too as well. If it's not, it's it's molded into something more than just food. Yeah, and, and over the times it just became like I'm pretty sure when they first started it was just about yeah, eat right, get your get your body right. But now I think it's like we like we stated, you know, whatever you're putting inside of your body, whether it's food or whether it's knowledge, you know what I mean, or energy, or energy, um, that's really what you what you could become. So, Absolutely, you know, it's not really a question. It was just more of a you know piggyback and a little statement. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. All right. So end of every show we have, as we do our research, we want to also just get any type of misinformation, things that we think we know, we don't. Okay. We We think we know, but we don't. So we close out every show with the misinformation of the day. The dictionary of misinformation. This is a hard one, guys. No, no, so it's 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 just choose a letter. Choose a letter. (laughs) All right. I'm just thinking I'm just thinking of my favorite rapper at the moment, and I feel Mm -hmm. like a lot of people misrepresent her, especially now that she's going through a trial. Um M. M. Megan D. Stallion. Oh Oh, support Meg. Support I'm team Meg, man. M. Mm-hmm. So I just opened up our book of inf- misinformation to M. Misinformation. And <clears throat> we're going to go with uh, Mrs. The abbreviation MRS dot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not really an abbreviation at all, although it is widely considered to be one, including in the dictionary. It once actually stood for mistress, but mistress and wife don't mean the same thing, so we stopped. Okay, <laughs> so all y'all misses out there, MR, MRS dot, uh, uh, make sure you're flashing your ring. All right, y'all. <laughs> all right, that's what we do here. We are here. <laughs> yeah, so look, thank wow. you for listening. Thank you for listening. Book, <laughs> I appreciate you. Shout out my man, co host 20. 20. You already know, we good. <laughs> yeah, so hey, listen. You can find us everywhere. YouTube, the visuals are out. Uh, we're brought to you by the Underdog Podcast Network. Be sure to subscribe, like for more episodes. You can find us on IG, Appraise the Phrase Podcast. You can find us on Twitter, Appraise Phrase. And listen, listen, listen. Don't forget, even in season two, that value is in the eye of the beholder. We'll holler at y'all. <laughs>